Because I was travelling on foot rather than by bike or by car, I had a number of experiences that would have been otherwise impossible. For example, in Switzerland, I was smuggled into an abbey by a monk named Max, who had a deep fat fryer hidden in his cell and who cooked me plates of chips for supper. Or when I reached Jerusalem, I was shown round the old city by a wandering evangelist named James, who had a long hair and a long beard, and who dressed in a tunic and robes like a modern-day Christ. However, one of the differences between pilgrimage and hiking is that you have to walk all of the bits that a rambler would skip. Even though I passed through some remarkable landscapes, I climbed through the Rhone Valley in the middle of winter, I visited the wilderness of Mount Athos in the height of spring, I also had very, some very difficult passages to navigate as well. For example, when I was in the Apennines in Italy, I spent eight days walking in the rain and was outside the entire time. Or when I was in Tripoli in northern Lebanon, I witnessed the worst bombing since the Civil War going on as I was in the centre of the city. However, as I entered the final stages of the walk, my perspective began to shift. I was so glad to be nearing Jerusalem that I was grateful for all of the things that happened along the way, the good as well as the bad. So if you ask me what my favourite part of the journey is, I can't actually tell you. In truth, it was all worthwhile.